Hey everyone, welcome to Zero Labs. Today is Friday, February 26th, 2016. I'm Mark Brash, your host, and welcome to This Week in Alternative Energy. This is going to be a very quick update. I've been spring cleaning in the lab all day and it's almost midnight right now, so let's get right into it. The race is definitely in full swing as competing industries vie for automotive and home market energy dominance. Every day it seems we hear and read of something new. It, will it be hydrogen fuel cells or rechargeable batteries that power your next car? Lithium ion, supercapacitors, or some other technology. River Simple, the developer of the Raza hydrogen powered city car, has a simple purpose quote, to pursue systematically the elimination of the environmental impact of personal transport. You'll find this article at Revolution Green. Yet in yet another fuel cell breakthrough, low-cost nickel-based catalyst. The race between the backers of electric cars versus hydrogen-powered is getting more interesting. At the moment, the electric has the edge over cost, but that may all be about to change. The University of Delaware's Yushan Yan believes that fuel cells will eventually win out. Yan and colleagues recently reported a breakthrough that promises to bring down the cost of hydrogen fuel cells by replacing expensive platinum catalysts with cheaper ones made from metals like nickel. The work is documented in a paper published January 14 in Nature Communications. Again, this article is at Revolution Green. One more article at Revolution Green, a photoelectrochemical cell has been developed at TU Wien, Vienna. It can chemically store the energy of ultraviolet light even at high temperatures. By combining highly specialized new materials, they have managed to combine high temperature photovoltaics with an electrochemical cell. Ultraviolet light can be directly used to pump oxygen ions through a solid oxide electrolyte. The energy of the UV light is then stored chemically. In the future, this method could also be used to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. This article taken from the Utah Daily Herald. Sad to report, the Utah County Sheriff's Office arrested Fountain Green Man Monday afternoon on suspicion of multiple counts of sex abuse. The arrest of Sterling Allen, age 52, comes after more than a year of investigation. According to police reports, a special agent with the FBI received a tip on January 2015 that Allen was involved in the sexual exploitation of children. Internet searches reportedly revealed several online videos in which Allen admitted he was a pedophile and had committed sex offenses against his children, uh, against children, not his children. Um, in January of 2016, agents interviewed Allen in Fountain Green and he reportedly admitted to molesting children when he lived in Eagle Mountain from where he moved six years ago. Allen also reportedly admitted he sexually assaulted a minor in the summer of 2014. Bail has been set at $250,000 cash only. My condolences to family and friends of Sterling Allen. Uh, what else? Uh, Project Camelot just announced that uh, they would be hosting an open panel discussion. And uh, the, uh, the text of the article at uh, Project Camelot reads, In light of the ongoing controversy around free energy of all kinds, including Cash and his foundation, 
and Spaceship Institute proposed technologies, I will be convening a panel discussion to discuss and present from all sides of the issues. If you are a student of free energy, alternative energy activist, or inventor with knowledge of cash technology, or have had dealings with free energy, plasma physics, or other forms of zero-point energy from the vacuum, or wish to be part of the live broadcast to discuss these issues, please email me at carry at projectcamelot.tv. Put energy panel in the subject line. Please include a short bio and why you should be included in the panel. Well, <clears throat> I wrote Carrie an email and said I would be glad to participate, provided that you will allow the voice of reason to be heard. And um, hmm, I have not heard back from Carrie, so one can only presume from that that they do not wish the voice of reason to be heard. And that is that. Lastly, the, uh, the date is still on, confirmed for another special live event with my guest Robert Murray Smith to be aired on the Zero Fossil Fuel channel, not the Zero Labs Live channel, Saturday, February 27 at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 p.m. Central European Time. This event should last about one hour and will include an open Q&A session in the chat or in the chat rooms afterwards. I hope I can count on seeing you there t tomorrow, later today. <laughs> so it's time for me to get to bed. And that's all for this week in Alternative Energy. I hope you enjoyed this roundup and join me again next week for more interesting renewable energy news from the alternative energy world. A great big thanks to all of you who have joined in support of my work, this channel, through Patreon, PayPal, direct donations via checks, and with Bitcoin. If you have not yet joined, I hope you will. Links, of course, are in the description. If you've got some research that you'd like to make public, or a new widget that you would like uh, to have shown that you've been working on in your garage, please be sure to write me at zero news at altenergy.org links to all articles for everything you've seen here will be in the description below and as always please rate share comment and subscribe to my videos peace everybody <laughs>